Sega has a roller coaster ride of a track record when it comes to delivering quality Sonic the Hedgehog games. Not to say there hasn't been some solid additions in recent years though, like the retro inspired Sonic Mania, but the number of questionable games they've pumped out is, well, a little disheartening, especially in the 3D realm. A while back, we counted down our top 10 best Sonic games. So now we're taking a look at the flip side of that with the top 10 worst Sonic games. So whether you're a Sonic fan or just curious about whether or not Sonic games are worth your time and money, take our advice on this. You'll likely want to avoid the ones on this list. And at number 10 is Sonic Forces. Let's start off this list with the most recent Sonic game to be released as of this recording, Sonic Forces. The game received a lot of mixed reviews from critics, with the cons being repetitive boss fights, lack of consistency and performance across consoles, poor physics, and underdeveloped tag team sections. But it does score points for overall visuals, and letting you create your own avatar. Despite the fact that this opened up the door for you to become the mastermind behind your own disturbing latex fetish clown, or hedgehog nightmare fuel, entirely up to you. Sonic Forces may not be as bad as some previous previous installments of the franchise and offers up some new ideas, but it also manages to fail in many areas where it should have improved upon, based on making those mistakes in previous games. Regardless, the game was generally a disappointment to many fans, especially coming off of the high that was Sonic Mania. And at number 9 is Sonic Unleashed. When Sonic Unleashed was first teased, it hinted to the series returning to its platforming roots, which to many was exciting, since prior to it, the franchise had been privy to a slew of poorly received titles. Released in 2008, it got mixed reviews, and generally performed well on the Wii. With critics noting that the Xbox and PS3 versions were awful and underdeveloped. Once again, the visuals in the game were praised, but it wasn't enough to save the game from the werehog concept, which featured Sonic transforming into the hedgehog equivalent of a werewolf. Yes, that's a thing. With many reviewers and fans feeling as if its sloppy gameplay and boring story arc were slapped onto the game last minute. Up next, number 8 is Sonic Blast. Sonic Blast is still considered to be an entertaining game, even by critics. Released in 1996, a platformer that was for the Genesis and Saturn consoles, the game contained different gameplay than previous Sonic games, which didn't sit well with some fans. The level design, music, and graphics were all praised, but it contained slower gameplay than previous Sonic titles, and by slow I mean significantly. Despite lazy controls, it still appealed to fans, but didn't manage to captivate those who already didn't have an affinity for the franchise, or those who craved the speed Sonic is known for. You just can't have a Sonic game if it's not fast, can you? And at number 7 is Sonic Shuffle. While the Japanese version is considered by some to be a superior version to the English release, Sonic Shuffle was supposed to be the equivalent to Mario Party, with Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, and Amy, allowing for up to 4 player co-op. Sounds pretty neat, right? Well, had the execution been decent, perhaps it would have been. The loading times between each character's turn on the game board made it lose momentum, with some calling the minigames pointless and complex, and somewhat boring. And at number 6 is Sonic R. There's always been something a little bit absurd about a Sonic racing game. While some of them have proven to be impressive and enjoyable, like Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed, others have felt pretty redundant. Sonic R may not feel redundant compared to other Sonic racing games, but it definitely feels pointless. It's canon that Sonic is the fastest character in the series, with Shadow running a very tight close second, so why create a game in which the characters race each other, for the most part, on foot? Using vehicles at least made some sort of sense. In addition to that, critics complained about the controls and gameplay, and how they made the game incredibly easy, without adding any real challenge or real depth to provide replayability. And to top it all off, it has one of the worst Sonic soundtracks to appear in the franchise, which considering the track record of other games is pretty hard to do. And at number 5 is Sonic Labyrinth. Played from an isometric perspective, Labyrinth is a puzzle platformer that was released in 1995. So why is it bad? Well, it was an attempt to break the mold and branch out the Sonic franchise by expanding on the genre, except it was slow, it was repetitive, and the game featured poor sound effects. And at number 4 is Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. Zero Gravity is one of those redundant Sonic racing games we mentioned earlier. It's Sonic on hover boards. Yep. But aside from the absurdity of that, critics trashed it for sloppy, loose controls and a lazy plot. If played on the Nintendo Wii without a GameCube controller, players could only use the motion controls, which critics said made the game confusing and practically unplayable. It was as if the game was rushed in development, resulting in controls that still needed to be further improved. Up next, number 3 is Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, cause Shadow whipping around a gun totally seems necessary and fitting of the franchise and of the character, right? Yep. From some questionable narrative and thematic choices to an unfavorable plot, this 2005 game was panned for its attempts at being edgy, instead coming off as laughable. Its weapons were stupid, the levels were poorly designed, and some critics expressed outrage over what felt like copied and pasted features from previous successful games. But silver lining, maybe? The soundtrack was great. So hey, at least there's that. 
And at number 2 is Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. A 2014 game for the Wii, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is another spin off game that's part of the Sonic Boom franchise. You know, the one where Knuckles is on steroids and is just like a flat out idiot. Yay, continuously ruining iconic characters. Aside from taking the things that you love and slowly suffocating them, Rise of Lyric was plagued by many gameplay mechanic issues, like its problematic camera system, its underdeveloped controls, the poorly written story and dialogue, and of course, a plethora of glitches. Its initial showing at E3 gained a slew of mixed reviews, and set up low expectations for the game, which it then met, with critics calling it bland, unpolished, and lacking of quality. And finally, in our number 1 spot is Sonic 06. Produced to commemorate the franchise's 15th anniversary, Sonic the Hedgehog aka Sonic 06, due to it being released in 2006, was a major letdown. Why? Well, first off, its initial pre-release showings received a ton of praise. Secondly, its plot was riddled with weird sh**. Like Sonic's death, the introduction to Silver, which got mixed reviews because some people actually really dig him. The narrative's overall cohesiveness was not cohesive, and the fact that Sonic max on a human lady friend, or rather she kisses him to bring him back to life, was just kind of odd. While the game did feature some terrifying new characters and offered up a solid intimidating boss fight or two, its gameplay mechanics put the rest of it to shame. Critics noted that it had a sloppy camera system, ridiculously long load times, bad voice acting, was riddled with glitches, and the controls were imprecise. And that, in general, it seemed underdeveloped, lacking any refining or polishing, as if Sega pushed the game out despite it being fully finished. It's considered to be the worst game in the Sonic franchise, with many people believing it's one of the worst 3D games in history. Alright, there we have it friends. So what have we learned today? That generally, the consensus with all poorly developed Sonic games is that it looks great, has stunning graphics, but the gameplay is the equivalent of dragging nails on a chalkboard. For those of you feeling disappointed, you should head on over to our channel and check out our top 10 Sonic games play playlist, and learn about all of the Sonic games that are excellent and definitely worth your time, especially if you're a Sonic fan. And hey, please show us some love if you dug this video by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I've been Kelly Pally and this is Top 10 Gaming. I'll catch you all in the next one.